Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Quran Weekly, this is your brother Omar Suleiman You know I, I frequently ask people what is the topic that you'd like to see addressed in a khutbah or in a halaqah that you've never heard before and I always hear you know I have an autistic child how do I deal with an autistic child what about a person who has a disability what about caring for those who have disabilities what's the reward of doing so is there anything in the sunnah about that and you know even addressing you know some some very backward cultural views I've heard some families that that have children that are that are deaf or that are blind or that are mentally challenged they'll say well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran summan bukman umyun fahum la yaqilun that they're deaf uh, mentally challenged and blind they're deaf dumb and blind and they'll literally say deaf dumb and blind means if you are deaf mentally challenged or blind that's what Allah is talking about so you're cursed and we don't believe that we believe that these are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that the believer is not struck with any form of distress any form of anxiety any form of illness not even the prick of a thorn except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away some of his sins so obviously this is a means of elevation this is a means of a person being purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how did the Prophet deal with these things? Well, we can see throughout the Quran examples of people that were cared for. So for example, Ayyub alayhi salam, the Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam was bedridden for over 10 years and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the wife's service of him, how his wife was in the service of him and taking care of him for all of those years as he was being tested by that illness. And in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we find that there were Sahaba that were blind. Okay, so, so the other Mu'addin, other than Bilal radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu, who was blind, the Prophet ﷺ made every effort to make him feel like he was part of the Ummah in every single way, so that he wouldn't feel out of place or feel awkward. So the Prophet ﷺ, you know, when he wanted to fight in battle, and he obviously can't fight because he's, he, you know, he's blind, the Prophet ﷺ allowed to let him carry the flag. There's even a, a very you know, uh, well-known hadith that Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum asked the Prophet ﷺ if he has to come to the masjid or not, because he's blind and it might be difficult for him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, can you hear the adhan? And he said, yes. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he called him back and said, you can hear the adhan, then he said, then you have to respond to that call. Some of the ulama, they said, so that he wouldn't feel like an outcast, so he wouldn't feel any different. Okay, so this is not only a hukum that's being established, a ruling that's being established, that if you hear the adhan, you have to come, but this is actually a mercy from the Prophet ﷺ, that Abdullah ibn Maktoum should be a part of the ummah in every single way, just like all the other men. We also find that there was a man by the name of Amr ibn al-Jamuh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the Ansar of Medina, and this man was an old man who had a very severe limp, and when he came to the battle, the Prophet ﷺ told him, he said, أَعْضَرَكَ Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for you, he's excused you, you don't have to. And he said, are you going to prohibit me from the reward of Allah and the Messenger ﷺ and perhaps Allah grants me the status of a martyr? And Amr ibn al-Jamuh, he participated in the battle and, the, and he was martyred and the Prophet ﷺ said, I have seen Amr ibn al-Jamuh strolling in Jannah without a limp. So he was particularly referring to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him full command of his body once again and did away with the disability that he had because of his dedication. Rasulullah also made, a point, made it a point to accommodate for Sahaba that had those disabilities. For example, we find that uh, a Sahabi by the name of Arfaja who uh, had his nose chopped off in battle. And when he had his nose, you can imagine how he looked not having uh, his nose. Uh, and this is a narration in Sunan Nasa'i. And so he, was, he, he made a nose of silver and that silver you know, start, had a bad smell to it. And he came to the Prophet and he complained about his nose made of silver. And he asked Rasulullah would I be able to have a nose of gold instead? And the Prophet said, yes, of course. So Rasulullah accommodated for those companions. Uh, and many of the companions later on in their lives had issues. Hassan ibn Thabit went blind. We can find many companions, Abdullah ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu, and the community took care of them. And it was even a, 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 a sense of competition to take care of those that were disabled, especially those that lived in, in the less accessible parts of Medina. Companions would try to go and serve those people and take care of them. Now we, we go a step further and this is really where I want to try to bring it home. You know, when we're talking about the reward of taking care of these people, number one, number one, if you look at all of the ahadith where the Prophet ﷺ talks about the reward of visiting and caring for the sick, they are phenomenal. 70,000 angels accompanying you on the way to and from uh, visiting a sick person. The Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to a person, Oh so and so, I was sick and you did not visit me. And a person would say, Ya Allah, 
how could, how could I visit you? You know, how could you be sick? How could I visit you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, didn't you know that so and so was sick? And that had you went to see him, you would have found me with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only mentioned his being with the sick person. There's an extent, you know, the hadith is longer than that and talks about different people with different needs. But particularly with the sick person, you would have found me with him. SubhanAllah, when you went to visit him. And you know, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged this practice, and this is a practice that's much rewarded. If you have a person who's disabled, if you know someone who's disabled, there's a reward in visiting that person, there's a reward in caring for that person. Okay, so if, you know, especially if that person is in your house, let's say that you have a child, imagine you're getting that reward every single day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with that person. Particularly, I really want to address the parents in particular that have had to deal with a disabled child. Don't you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees your sacrifices? If Allah praises the sacrifice of parents for children that don't have autism and don't have disabilities and things of that sort, what about a parent of an autistic child? And Allah knows how much sacrifice you make. Don't you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that and Allah will reward you for that? And understand, especially those who have someone perhaps with an even more serious disability where they're, you know, they're completely ma'dhur, the, the pen has been lifted from them, they're not even accountable for their actions anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a person of Jannah to care for. You have a person of Jannah, a person who's sinless under your care. Wouldn't you love to care for that person so that perhaps on the day of judgment they can intercede on your behalf and say that my mother took care of me when no one else would take care of me, even though I couldn't offer her anything in return. My mother, my father, my brother, my sister, so and so took care of me and loved me and showed me compassion. You have a person of Jannah under your care. What more do you want from this life than to have someone from Jannah under your care that you can care for and on the day of judgment can intercede on your behalf? But certainly as a community, we need to adjust our attitude inshallah ta'ala towards this topic. And we need to start you know, coming up with initiatives to take care of disabled people and also try to battle some of those, those uh, very, very, very uh, insensitive and, and just, you know, just ignorant uh, notions that we have from different cultures and stigmas that we have from different cultures. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to, to have the, the open hearts to care for those that are in need and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with those that are close to him and beloved to him on the day of judgment and make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.